Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and this is Board Game Inquisition, where we're here to offer you insight and information about the board games you might just want to have in your own collection. So today we're going to have a little bit of fun and I'm going to talk about the best board game player boards. So I'm not going to lie, some of my favourite parts of opening up a new board game and setting it up to play is seeing what the actual player board looks like. I think it often determines, you know, the type of game you're playing. Um, I think it also decides how your strategies might evolve based on how everything moves in front of you. And I always find them really exciting and kind of intriguing. So I thought it'd be really fun to talk about some of my favourite ones. Um, and of course, there are loads more beyond what I have chosen chosen here today and you can totally tell me what they are in the comp box below. I love a good player board. So I'm going to start right in and of course these are in no particular order, no favourites were played. These are just the ones that came to mind when I'm making this list. Let's start with Orleans from Tasty Minstrel Games. Um, and this is a game about basically taking workers from your bag, placing them out on your board, and sending them off to do all kinds of work. Um, yeah, it makes it sound really boring when I describe it like that. But this player board is something special, and it helps that your workers come in little disc shapes. And so the player board itself has a whole host of spaces where you can place your workers, these beautiful discs, um, and then what actions you can perform using the workers. Um, and I just think there's something really beautiful about how it's all set up in front of you when you lay your workers out. Not only to mention that it makes the game fairly obvious, so you understand exactly what's happening. Well, this worker goes here, so they're going to do this kind of action. Um, I think the way it's set up is just so much fun and cute and it's very very satisfying to place those discs down in those spaces. Um, so that is Orleans from Tasty Minstrel Games. The next player board I'm a big fan of is part of Terra Mystica from Z-Man Games. And Terra Mystica is essentially a civilization kind of building game where you play as a particular race or a particular group and you head out and you place buildings out on the board to grow your cities and your towns and, and whatnot um, and you know go for victory points. The nice thing about your player board is that it actually controls most of what you do in the game. There's a lot of parts to it. Firstly it holds all of your buildings which I really really like and as you lift them off to place them on the board it reveals certain bonuses you'll get from placing those and I like that that's there as a reminder. Not only that, how you control magic is also placed on your player board as you move these little discs from one bowl to another to create magic for you to use in the game. It also has a whole host of other reminders for things you can do, such as things with your shovels or things you can move along. Um, and overall, I just think it's a very compact but very well organized board. And I love seeing it when it's all set up with all your little houses and all your little buildings. Um, and it makes it obvious what it is you're supposed to be doing, that you're removing these to get bonuses underneath. Um, so that's Terra Mystica from Z-Man Games. Right, so graphical issues aside, I really love the player board for Castles of Burgundy. Castles of Burgundy is a tile laying game in which you'll draft tiles to place out into your domain and you're going to want to group particular tiles together to get particular bonuses. So your player board consists of basically where you can place all these tiles and the way it's arranged together is such that you're going to have to have particular types of tiles grouped together um, and filling out particular areas so that you can get extra things. Um, it's nice to look at actually the colours um, on the board itself and the way it's all arranged is quite nice and you can imagine yourself really kind of building your whole little world here. Um, I love the way the pieces fit directly onto the board um, and you, it's very clear what it is you're trying to do. I think I've said this about every game so far in this list um, but I love the satisfaction of fitting in the tile to complete the section. I think that's what's really special here and it's cool watching everything grow as you put all these different buildings or different animals out on your board. So that's Castles of Burgundy and this this is from Aaliyah Games.
So this player board is probably going to be rather controversial, but I'm going to say it anyway because I still love it. And this is the player board for Terraforming Mars. The board for this game is definitely on the thin side, but I really like how it works. And this is that it keeps track of various items or goods that you're earning while playing Terraforming Mars, which is of course a game about well, terraforming Mars, um, in which you play cards and, and gather money, you're big corporations, and you're trying to turn Mars into something habitable. Um, so this board keeps track of all of these things that you use, and I think it's done quite cleverly. And the way the goods can move around, especially from sections like your heat goes in, or your energy goes into your heat, um, and things like that, I think make it um, very easy to track everything. And it's definitely the core of what you're doing in the game which is very corporation-y, which is keeping track of all of your resources and all of your money. I really like it a lot. Um, now, people don't like this because you use cubes, right? Tiny cubes. And the cubes like to move and fall around the place when you use them on the player board. Yes, it was a terrible oversight. However, with the newer expansion, you can buy inset kind of player boards. They come in that so your cubes don't fall around as much. But despite owning those, I still go back to the original board. I don't know why, maybe I'm a glutton for punishment. Um, but I'm still a big fan of how this player board works. So that's Terraforming Mars and that's from Stronghold Games. My list wouldn't be complete without yet another Stefan Feld game. And this goes to Trajan from Hootspiele. Um, and your player board in this is essentially a roundel. So it's a big circle in which you're moving different colored cubes, or well, not even cubes, they're little cylinders around, and you're connecting them up together to be able to perform actions. Um, and if I was to try and tell you what this game is about, well, it's about being Roman, um, as far as I can understand. It's a dry euro. It's not particularly thematic, but it's a very, very good one. Um, and basically, you're performing actions out on the board. Um, you know, so you're getting favour in the Senate. You're expanding. You're going and trading with ships. That kind of stuff, Roman stuff. But on your boards, to be able to do any of these actions, you have to line up your cylinders so that they all end up in the same place. And you start with quite a number of them, so you have to plan your turns out and everything moves around in a beautiful circle. And I love it. I think it's genius. Um, I, I love the fact that you don't do this action for using the roundel on a big wheel or a big part of the board. No, it's your personal one. And you're forever looking at it and trying to work out the next step. I think it's very well laid out. I also think it's really ingenious. Um, and it's one that I really, really love when I see it all set up on your player board. So that is Trajan from Hootspiele. Some of the greatest player boards I've ever come across belong to Captain Sonar from Malago Games. Captain Sonar is a cooperative game in which you split into teams and you're trying to find each other's submarine um, and obviously sink it. So how this works is you basically you split into two teams and you set up this board between you so that nobody can see um, what the other is doing. And each person on your team takes on a role on the submarine. So someone's gonna be the one to track you know, where you're going. That's like the captain. There's gonna be someone who tracks where the enemy says they're going. There'll be someone who's in charge of the weapons and such. Um, I think this is just really, really fun. And everything you get is on acetate. So you use whiteboard markers to wipe it out. And I think these are really fun player boards because they're really immersive. Like you're, you're taking on, this is your job with your piece of card and you know, you've got to do your best to do it to get ready to man the torpedoes or they've gone around that island, we can block them off at the pass. Um, it really feeds into the game itself. Actually, it is the, basically all that this game is apart from imagination. Um, and I think that that's a really clever move on their part by giving you this very specific player aid with a very specific job, um, you really fall into that role. Um, and I absolutely love seeing those. Um, and I think they're fantastic player boards. So that is Captain Sonar from Malago Games. So this is probably the most fun game on the list. Um, and this is The Quacks of Quidlinburg and it is published by North Star Games, I believe. Um, so 
Quacks of Quidlinburg is a game where you are indeed a quack doctor and you're trying to make all sorts of potions. And so what you do during the game is you take items out of your bag and you place them into your potion. And the aim of the game is to have them not explode. There's certain ones that will explode and as if you play too many of those, everything goes poof. Um, so your player board in this case is a giant pot. How cool. Um, with all of these numbers around it to determine, you know, how far along you get on your potion or how long before it explodes and then the kind of bonuses you'll get for you know making a good potion. Um, I really really like these especially when you pull them out they're quite big and I love that everybody has their own pot to play with. I think it really fits well with the game. I think they're really really fun as well um, and they're beautifully coloured so as always I'm kind of impressed with um, the quacks of Quidlinburg. One of the greatest strengths of the player boards from Scythe from Stonemaier Games is just how versatile and interchangeable they are. Scythe is a game where you are a faction leader in kind of an alternative timeline, 1920s Russia kind of feel, and you're heading out upon the map, you're trying to enhance your industry, build robots, grow farms, that kind of stuff. Um, and it's all very, very beautiful and of course really entertaining. What's cool about your player boards is they come in two halves and these denote the kind of actions you can take on your turns. So things like moving, producing, um, building, creating mechs and such. And when you do the top half of an action, you can also do the bottom half of an action. And I think this is where it gets really, really interesting. Because the boards are interchangeable, you don't necessarily have the top and bottom action every time you play. Um, and I love the fact that those actions are put together Together like that on that player board. Not only that, they're recessed in parts too so that you can upgrade parts of your board and certain pieces will move around and reveal other things and I think that just makes it extra exciting. Not only that, these are very beautiful player boards with the continued pieces of art. Um, so side is full of great art but also on the player boards and I think that's a really really nice touch. So if you want something intricate and interesting then these are great player boards. And I do declare I saved the best to last, folks. And this goes to the Taverns of Thief and Tal uh, from Schmidt Spiele. And this is a game in which you're running a tavern. And you know what your player board is? It's a tavern. And not only that, but it's got interchangeable pieces, kind of like a jigsaw puzzle that you pop in and out onto your player board. So as you upgrade things as well, you pop out pieces and flip them over. So you start out with three tables in your tavern. Well, you can upgrade it to four. Um, you can add certain things um, and take away other things. And um, I think that's just so, so cool. And there's a lot of touches on this player board as well. Like the fact that you're in is actually named. I just, I love how it's all put together. And I always am filled with a bit of childlike glee when you're assembling your tavern. So you're popping in your pieces, or you're gonna flip this over. And I just think it's so tactile, um, but also, you know, practical. These are all things that give you bonuses. Um, because it's core, this is a, a dice drafting game and you'll get dice with particular numbers, will allow you to perform specific actions. You know, you've heard that before. Um, but the way it's implemented here is just so damn cool um, that I don't think I'll ever stop being excited when we pull the player board for Taverns of Thief and Tal out of the box. So that runs out my list for the best player boards, or at least the best player boards in board games, according to me. Um, it's not an exhaustive list, but um, I hope you had fun with it like I did. Tune in again for some more short and informative board game reviews. That's what I normally do, but I've also had a lot of fun making this list. So maybe there'll be more in the future. So until then, everybody, take care and bye-bye.